So um, I'm making this video because there's a plane overhead. That's kind of interesting. Um, I'm making this video because I'm meeting up with my friend Cynthia who used to be a counselor but she let go of her license and she's coming over today to sit down and talk with me. Um, I'm hoping to, um, in five minutes, here's the fine five minute timer, that I can tell my story in five minutes and, um, and then Doug will fill in some stuff that I didn't, I didn't do. So um, I'll start with that I have always been essentially an extremely healthy, happy person. Well, um, December 13th, I, um, I had um, a blood clot that went through a hole in my heart, went into my brain, and uh, gave me two hemorrhagic strokes and 14 ischemic strokes. Now, each of those hemorrhagic strokes, um, each one would have killed somebody, and I had two of them. Um, it's just a blessing that I didn't, I didn't die. And as a result, having these little holes in my head that the wiring is regenerate, regenerating, however, the whole first year has been has helped. That's what can I say? It's hell trying to do things that you seem like you should be able to do. But if you had all, if you had a computer that was broken, you just don't access things. Well, um, um, I'm going to calm down. This is um, a very difficult subject for me, the whole thing. And so the, um, um, I, the blood disorder that I had, which led to the strokes, also um, was, um, um, I don't know how to say it, cultivating, roosting. It was, it was um, growing a tumor that we didn't even know about. Well, um, so I, um, I, um, I live every day with, um, having a faulty brain, and luckily the first year, my husband gave me the privilege of being quiet. He answered the phone. He dealt with all the medical problems so that I could do yoga and medicate and meditate and um, it helped me tremendously particularly because I couldn't swallow and I couldn't talk very well and um, it was very hard when people would call me and when I say to them it's really hard for me to speak they just don't get it and I basically have to get them off the phone. Well, that comes and goes. I, I still, I still have the symptoms. That they still have stroke, prob stroke problems, but now we have cancer, and we are healing it in a natural way. And I'm for the first time in a year and a half when I go to the farmers market and I go to the um, um, co-op, I realize it's, it's really hard for me to talk to people um, because um, generally they, um, they're scared to death of me. They don't know what to say. They think I'm like the walking dead. And really all I want is compassion. I'm looking at their face and I'm hoping that they will say to me, I want to be there for you, Diana. <laughs> and, you know, having a relationship with Doug, um, every day we read the Upanishads, we do enemas, 
we do the chamber and every couple days we have to check in and ask the other person how's it going and a lot of times we have to say very difficult things like I had no idea this would be as hard as it is it's very hard and um, so my, my point of this five minute talk um, maybe I can say one a few more things which is for the most time people just don't know what to say to you and when they do say something it's always a stupid thing and um, they can't help it this is overwhelming for everyone and generally they interrogate me and say like well have you tried this this cures cancer or they'll say something like um, what's the other thing they do you look great um, well they uh, just wait Doug let me say it um, they um, they don't really listen to what I have to say they, they're terrible listeners and when I say something like you know when I sit outside and I put my glasses down and I put my watch and my bracelet down I do that so that they're very valuable to me so if I can look and see them I feel safe and confident that pretty soon I'm gonna get to wear them and instead people say well you know you can put croquis on your face and that would take care of it and um sure I know that they mean the well but nobody can know just how difficult it is for Doug and myself so that's the end of my five minutes. Then I'm gonna um, do a three minute one. This is a three minute one so that Doug can, um, as the caregiver and the husband, he can add some more. First, I'd like you to show your brain pictures because I think they're really great. Oh, okay, here's the brain picture. Okay, this okay. Is, these are the new brain pictures. Okay. So this shows the brain. And I think these are the little holes that were blown in it. Yep. But it, this is one of the halves that you're looking at here, and this is where it connects to the body. And it's just, it shows um, that it's healing. He actually used to have more holes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's, um, here's a cloud are, program. These are clouds, but they're also reminiscent of brains. Mm hmm. But these are clouds, and you can see that they have color where they intersect. Yep. And here's clouds and leaves coming together. Okay. Oh, and here's, a, here's, um, here's a nice one with clouds and leaves where they intersect and then the leaves and the clouds come through. Okay. And these, these all have a life of their own that keep growing and changing, which is beautiful. Okay, Doug. So, um, you want to um, add to about, about the stroke or the cancer or what it's, what, what it's like for us? It's just, um, I can't, I look forward to each day, and each day is, is very difficult, and there's lots, lots of things to do just to get through the day in, in what would be considered a normal fashion. There's lots of things to do, but um, I do enjoy each day because I get to see Diana getting stronger and developing abilities every day, and that's that's been a thrill just to see her getting stronger and, and, and getting better but it's every once in a while it's like climbing on a really steep cliff where you're really involved with every place that your hand and feet go you're really watching carefully and every once in a while you get this elated feeling well I'm really doing this I'm climbing and then then you look down and you realize that to make one bad step means you go all the way down to the bottom and that's it on that. And I, I kind of feel that that's, that's the way we're walking right now, is that it's, it's fun and it's scary, and it's, um, there's a lot of choices to make. That's it. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna walk around the garden and include the garden and maybe the dog. Okay, Ami. Hi. Okay, I think we're done. Do you want to do this? You want to okay. end it? Okay. Okay.